Hi, Blair here with uh, MXM. And by now, if you haven't heard, you know, there aren't outbreaks happening in fitness like people hypothesized going into lockdown. I've got, you know, I've got tracking of the Colorado outbreak data um, against member visits. I've got the Colorado outbreak data sorted by the 58 categories. Fitness doesn't show up on it. I've got the Oregon outbreak data here um, showing no outbreaks in fitness. I've got the Seattle and King County Public Health 18 page report for fitness that literally isn't even, isn't even mentioned uh, in it. So by now, we know that outbreaks are not happening in fitness, but we ought to be asking why aren't outbreaks happening in fitness? How could, how could we be so wrong going into this and the data shows it's not? So I'm gonna give you the top 10 reasons why outbreaks aren't happening in fitness. And it starts here. Uh, 10, it is the Business model. Ah, business model. We're a subscription-based business. We don't just open our doors and get new customers. The customers that are going to come in pay us monthly dues. And so we are dependent on not losing customers. We're more dependent on not losing customers than we are on gaining customers. So the business model says, oh my gosh, if our customers are in fear, we must respond to that because that's how we can keep them here and keep dues coming. That's why you saw the fitness industry respond so quickly. So I put it, number 10 is our business model. Number nine, we have members, not customers. What does that mean? That means the only people that can come into our club had to go through our business model. They have a membership. They came in, we understand who they are. We can communicate with them in advance. It's not like we open our doors and a bunch of people that we don't know come in. It's the people that we exactly know. In fact, we have to get to know you for you to actually come in and utilize our facility. We get to know your name. We know how to contact you by phone. We know where you live. Generally, we know age, gender, et cetera. So because we have members, we can pre-communicate everything. And because members come in on a repeated basis, they are eager to comply. That comes to the next thing. We have check-in. What other business do you go to we have check-in systems. What does that allow us to do? That means that when members come in for the first time, they sign new pledges of the new behavior that's gonna be required in order for them to stay a member. It means we have a gating system we can control so easy for capacity. It means we have killer contact tracing. With the push of a button, we know everybody that checked in at a certain time and how to get a hold of them. Check-in systems is that gating system that allows for new pledges to be signed, Notes to be put if somebody hasn't come in yet. So this is great gate control. Next, because of the check-in systems and the new pledge, pledges that people create, we have great, great hygiene. So the systems that were put in place because of the narrative coming into the lockdowns uh, clubs responded and we have phenomenal hygiene and we've seen hundreds of thousands of pieces of feedback now people saying love how clean the club is love that other members are cleaning the club so that's at six at five I just learned this by going through all the data on outbreaks in the state of Washington they say that one of the reasons outbreaks happens is when clusters of people come into businesses together in different in different types of entertainment over 90% of our check-ins are single, single person check-ins. They come in one at a time. People get checked in one at a time. They maintain distancing one at a time as they come in. So single person uh, check-ins. Next is equipment spacing. We know where you will be for an extended period of time and how to keep those spaced apart. We know which way you'll be facing the entire time and how far apart because equipment is not designed to be used by two people. It's all single use. And so we can space those out. We can put screens in between. So equipment spacing. All right, next is masks. Whatever the mask policy is, clubs have gone above and beyond to make sure it's well communicated because we have members, not customers, and we can communicate in advance because we have check-in systems and new pledges so that new mask pledge can be signed in advance. And then whatever that mask policy is, whether it's all masks all the time or all masks unless you're on a piece of cardio, we have great mask compliance. Number eight, no 
close contact for extended periods. That's right, in gyms, people are coming in and they're working out on their own. Sometimes they have an exercise partner, but oftentimes that exercise partner is from the same household. So, uh, number eight, no close contact. Number nine, airflow. We've been dealing with sweat and respiration forever. Our systems are generally over-engineered to handle more air turns and better filtration. We have the best airflow of any vertical. Number one reason outbreaks aren't happening in fitness. Number one reason, take all of this and put on top of it healthy people. Now, people that are sick don't come in and work out. Certainly there are asymptomatic people, and I get that. Certainly we have some people that aren't healthy, but the majority of fitness customers are healthier people that have been exercising, and on top of all this, healthy people and what we need right now because a large part of the worst cases with this COVID-19 is a failure of fitness in our society. If people were more fit, certainly some fit people are going through a tremendous amount of distress. But the CDC, the World Health Organization, all of them show clearly that the healthier an individual is, the less they are at risk. And that's it. There's your top 10 of actually why we're not seeing outbreaks in fitness. That's it.